everyone. Welcome to Baca's Bites, episode three of our series as part of celebration for our upcoming play, The Watsons. I'm Kate Ratcheter, your food designer, and I'm here tonight with another wonderful special guest, one of our cast members, Melissa Verwey is here, and she's going to be helping me make some drinks and cocktails. So Melissa, please uh, sign in. It would be lovely to see your face. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Good. So ready for this. Oh, yes. And I feel like you've got one of the best recipes in the series. I mean, who doesn't like a good drink or a cocktail, right? True, right? <laughs> so I know that you've already been doing a little bit of work up front. Um, so I take it you've got your, your lemons ready to go or at least started. Yep, I do. Fantastic. Okay. So the first thing we're going to be making tonight, folks, is we're going to be making a lemonade tea, and then we're going to be using that to actually make our cocktail. So Melissa and I have both been busy uh, uh, breaking down a bunch of lemons, but we've got a few more to go. So Melissa, why don't we finish those off right now? Let's do it. I'm actually going to grab a strainer just because I don't have a really nice uh, juicer. Um, I just got my reamer here for anyone who has one of these at home. Those pesky seeds, right? Mine get stuck in the top here, but it has this little opening so you can just pour out the juices. In your That's wonderful. Great. So I'm going to break my down. So you need about a cup of lemon juice total. So I'm pretty close. I think I've only got one more lemon to go. How about you? Yeah, same here. Okay. So why don't you it. let everybody uh, who's watching know which, uh, which character you're playing in the show? Yes, I play Margaret Watson. And in this big Watson family, where does she fall in the family tree? Um, she is the middle child. Okay. Well, the middle daughter. Yeah. The middle daughter. Yeah. And is, is she like a true blue middle child? Is she a troublemaker or what's her personality like? She is a very fun character to play. Um, I get to play around with my vocals. Um, and I would say she's very uh, boy crazy. She's marriage focused. She is maybe a little bit self-centered. Um, and I would think she's pretty confident. Oh, she's a bit of a drama queen then. Just a little, yeah. I would say that. <laughs> Which is I always know. fun to play a character like that. <laughs> Wonderful. And is this one, is this your first show with Theater Bacchus? Um, no, uh, I was also in their holiday show, A Christmas Carol. That was my first show with them. Wonderful. And how are you finding doing the voice acting? Is this something you do regularly or are you oh. more live performance as an actress? Hmm. I've done a few children's books, just narrating them, and I did one radio commercial, but other than that, I don't have as much voiceover experience. I do enjoy it, though. I like that in rehearsals, you get to be in your pajamas, and you don't really see anyone. You just kind of focus on listening and reacting and getting your lines in, um, but I do miss a live audience. I really miss being on stage and hearing the instant laughter or that connection that you get with an audience. It's uh, it's definitely tough to get the same enthusiasm from your cat or dog that you get yeah. from a large audience, right? Yeah, except when you make loud noises and your cat goes running out of the room, you're like, yeah, I nailed that. <laughs> then you know you've sold it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I think I'm pretty good for them juice. So for anyone who doesn't have a nice juicer, what I did here is I just used a fine mess strainer I would normally use for baking. Just put that over the dish. And now all of that extra like pulp and the seeds are all kind of taken care of. And I don't have to go hand picking out all the seeds. So that's an easy cheat if you don't have a nice juicer like Melissa's got here. I definitely think I'm gonna have to pick one up like that though. It's a, yeah. it's a pretty nice one. <laughs> it was on Amazon for like $7, I think. Oh, good old Amazon. <laughs> uh, so we've got our juice. Um, and of course, it's super sour right now. So we need to add some things to it. So we both brewed up a cup of tea. So you need one cup of tea. It can be a traditional tea. It can be an herbal tea. It can be a green tea. What have you got to use tonight, Mosa? I have Peaches and Dream. And it is, let's see, it has apple, rosehip, hibiscus, peach pieces, chamomile petals, and natural flavors. Oh my goodness, that sounds yeah. delicious. Very fruity. Mine's a, mine's a grilled pineapple green tea. So you can see that you can get away with a lot of different flavors for this. 
Um, uh, doing different like floral or fruity kind of teas is nice because it just adds to the interesting flavors of the tea. So you can make this thing about a, you know, a million different ways. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a good mix. Uh, and then if we drank it right now, it would probably blow our sinuses out. So we do need to add a little bit of sugar um, and some water. So I'm putting in about two cups of filtered water into mine because um, that lemon juice is really, really concentrated. Liz, have you ever made like lemonade from scratch? Uh, not from scratch. No, I typically just do lemon water, not actual lemonade. So I'm really excited for this. I love lemonade. I'm a huge lemonade fan. I love the tart taste. Yes. And the way we're doing this one, we're not putting a ton of sugar into it. We're only putting about um, a third of a cup. Um, and you can sweeten it more if you want, but the reason I don't sweeten it is we're going to be putting it into that cocktail afterwards, uh, the sour sister. Um, and we don't want it to be overly sweet because we're going to be adding a sweet liqueur. And if we make the lemonade too sweet beforehand, it's just going to overpower the cocktail. So if you're going to make the drink and then you're going to make the cocktail, keep the sugar down. But if you're somebody who doesn't do alcoholic drinks and you just want to enjoy the lemonade and it still feels a little tart, you can actually add some extra sugar in later. So third of a cup. Okay. Now I'm using brown sugar. Will that make a difference at all? Uh, you may find it takes a little bit more to stir it in, and you're going to get the notes of the molasses from the brown sugar, um, okay. which actually might add a nice little richness to it. Okay. Um, yeah, you can even get away with using something like honey for people that prefer that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend like a maple syrup because then all you're going to taste is maple. Okay. Um, and I don't think it would go super well with our cocktail plans. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is just get some ice and a nice tall glass. I gotta go to my freezer for that. <laughs> now, I went a little bit fancy and I made ice cubes that have rose petals in them. Oh, a woman after my own heart. I love that. Let me see. Thank you, yeah, here, I'm just gonna hold it up here for you. What kind of flower is that in there? It's a rose. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I just use those whiskey balls that you fill up with water and I just put some petals in and then continue filling up with water and there you go. I love it. I'm definitely gonna dress mine up with flowers too because I feel like flowers have been a big theme for this show. Mm -hmm, for um, sure. so I'm just gonna pour, pour my lemonade over top first. And then I've got a couple different flowers here. I feel like for the lemonade, I'm going to use my bee balm. So there, there are a lot of flowers you can grow here in Ontario um, that uh, are absolutely safe to eat. And I think bee balm is one of my favorite. This is a pollinator flower. Bees love this. Um, it smells like oregano and it tastes like mint. Um, and it's entirely edible leaves and all. And just look at how cute that looks. Oh, I like that. That's so pretty. You could serve that at a restaurant. I would pay money for that. I know, right? It's amazing what a little flower can do to really elevate a drink. <laughs> right? Here, this is mine. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> All right. So now that we've made the uh, the virgin drink, now we're going to have a little fun and we're going to make the adult cocktail. Uh, we named this one the Sour Sister um, after uh, all the Watson sisters vying for all the different men in the show. Uh, it's also got our fabulous sour lemonade in it, but we're also going to be using just a little bit of gin. So okay. I've got my gin here. And we're also going to be using, I'm using St. Germain, but any sort of elderflower liqueur will work, right? So I'm going to grab my cocktail shaker and I'm going to grab a bit more ice for it. Oh, I think I've still got a bit over here, actually. Now, how did you come up with the idea for this drink? Well, I was really inspired by uh, traditional garden party drinks. And one of the most common ones is lemonade. And I spent uh, quite a bit of time in uh, the UK visiting my sister. And gin is just everywhere and they have so many different fabulous kinds of gin over there and gin and lemonade 
are like they're like wine and cheese like they're meant to be together (laughs) Um, so I find that this is a wonderful cocktail and then we're adding the floral notes kind of inspired by a lot of Jane Austen's flower themes Uh, and I feel like it just all kind of balances well together so we need about an ounce and a half of gin Do you make a lot of cocktails at home, Melissa? I do, yes. I'm actually going to do double just because I'm going to pour out a couple of different drinks to show the different styles you can do. I'll just add a bit more, too, just for fun. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) We're all having a party here. So the ounce and a half is if you're doing a single drink. Um, And then we're going to do a quarter ounce of St. Germain. You don't need a lot. It's really quite floral, and it's going to add quite a bit. Oh, it smells really good. Mm-hmm, right? Very floral, very syrupy and sweet. Yes, that's why you don't want to go too heavy with it. Okay. I like so this. if you're fixing like a cocktail for a garden party, what, what would be your go-to cocktail? I would say either a mimosa or a gin and tonic. Oh, mimosas are lovely because you can have that anywhere from like brunch all the way to the evening, right? Yeah. Any time of day, it's totally acceptable. <laughs> All right. And you can mix it up too, like you don't have to do orange juice. You can use different, like a peach juice or apple juice or any kind of juice, really. Anything it's, goes. It's true, there's so many flavor options there, right? Yeah. Now for every drink you're putting in, you need roughly about four to six ounces of the lemonade. Okay. Um, you know, go less if you prefer a little bit more of a spirit forward drink. If you're somebody who likes something a little bit lighter. Then and I is that know. about half a cup? Yeah. Four ounces is going to be about half a cup. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm doing enough for a party here. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more. Out of the way. Moment of truth. We'll see how my bartender shaking skills are. Well, mine are not very good. I'm not Tom Cruise in cocktail. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, nope. We got a little bit too much on the side here. Okay. There we go. I actually left my cocktail shaker out on a patio, and I think the metal warped a little bit on me. No. <laughs> tragic because I'm quite fond of this shaker but I guess it's just another excuse to go shopping for another cocktail shaker yeah <laughs> can never have too many of those no it's true so I normally do this drink in a lowball glass okay but you could do it in a martini glass you can do it in a champagne glass Ooh, okay so I'm gonna use this glass here Lovely. I'm going to do up a couple different styles. Ooh, okay. And actually, I think I've got some large ice cubes I can work with as well here. And I'm going to grab another ice cube. So, add that in for that one. So, Melissa, the show's coming up very soon, isn't it? Yes, it is in a few weeks, actually. So it's August 5th to 7th, and then the 13th and the 14th. Wonderful. And people can still get tickets at this point, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Go to theaterbacchus.com and get your tickets. They'll last 40 hours from the night of your show onward. And it has a musical performance and a podcast right before the show, so you'll learn more about it. You get a lot for your ticket for the show, don't you? You do. And then you can make these drinks to go with it, of course. Yes. Well, we've already had, I mean, I've been having a lot of fun with some of your cast members. We've been making tea sandwiches and crackers and jam, and I've even got a chance to hang out with Lana next week, where we're going to be making some very bougie, cheesy toast, um, which I'm particularly excited about, but I think the cocktail rounds it out nicely. And I like the sandwiches. I actually had those for lunch today. That's awesome. I did it so that I made a gluten-free vegetarian version. So I went a little rogue there, but it was delicious. And I have extra cream cheese stuff left over, so I'm probably going to have more this week. Wonderful. 
All right. Well, I've got all of mine set up. How's your how are yours looking? Looks really good. I kind of want to taste them too. I I think it's time we actually taste what we've made. So yeah, yours looks so good. <laughs> What's yours? All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. I'm gonna go for the one with the alcohol first. Yes, I think that's yeah. a good idea. Here's the show. Cheers. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Mm, I could drink this all afternoon. <laughs> I could too. Oh my goodness. That's delicious. I'm going to try the virgin one. I think it's a good idea too, yes. Mm. I find the virgin one's a little more tarty because it doesn't have the, the cure in it or the gin. But yeah. both are very good. So as I said, if you want to make the cocktail as balanced as possible, go with the sugar amount that's in there. But afterwards, if you've still got leftover lemonade, the lemonade will keep for a few days in the fridge. You can add a little extra sweetener to it, and then you've got a nice treat for the afternoon on a hot summer day, which yeah. you know we're getting a lot of those right now. Yeah, these are perfect to sit outside and just sip away all day. I think they're kind of dangerous. <laughs> they taste really good. I could go through a few of these. Yeah, I definitely need to be careful now that there's three sitting in front of me. But. <laughs> Melissa, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on tonight. Um, I hope you enjoy your drinks. Um, and I am so excited to hear your performance in the show in just a couple of weeks. Um, so you. again, for viewers that are listening, be sure to get your tickets and be sure to tune in next week. We're going to be here on Monday, 7 p.m. with Lana herself uh, making our last dish. Um, and be sure to check the website tomorrow. The recipe for these cocktails is going to be on the page. Thank you so much. Have a great night, Melissa. It was so good to see you again. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.